Hi, and welcome to episode 36 of C3, Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. And today we are going to talk about necromancy. But first... Yeah. isn't that yeah. cool? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. This Me has too. been... I can't remember who asked for it, uh, but we've had multiple people ask for it on Instagram in one of the polls that we did. So um, it's been a topic that people have been wanting and we wanted to do it correctly and take our time. And I really think we're going to have to do more than one on it. There's so much that goes to it. The history is just the coolest thing. And yeah. We could do a whole episode just on the history of necromancy. But anyway, so what are we drinking? We are drinking, so we can't figure out the name for it, either the Dead Walk or Black Magic. You know, mm-hmm. we had a couple question marks by it because after one of these, you think the dead are walking, you know, oh, like for sure, like the world is spinning. And let me tell you, okay. And, it, and if you have enough of them the next day, you feel like the dead walking. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a uh, black vodka with raspberry liqueur, liqueur, liqueur. I can't say that word. Le- liqueur. And I actually liqueur. tried one <laughs> with a black raspberry. I've been sampling so i'm not sure which one i like better the regular raspberry or the black raspberry i don't like black raspberry so i do the okay. regular mm-hmm. yeah yeah we're in two separate locations so we're each playing with the drinks apart from each other yeah. so it's it's hard to say what if what she made tastes the same as what i made yeah <laughs> we're using the same ingredients but it's hard to say yeah. but anyway um and then you do a little bit of like s- freshly squeezed lemon juice yeah. into it yeah Um, And I also sugared the rim with some raspberry syrup. And then I also drizzled some extra raspberry syrup in the drink for a a little bit of extra sweetness. Oh, I didn't do that. I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Next drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next Next one. (laughs) Um, And I I think that the name is fitting for our topic today. Yeah. 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 So what is, let's like get into it. What is necromancy? Mm Mm-hmm. So according to Wikipedia, uh, necromancy is the practice of magic or black magic involving communication with the dead, either by summoning their spirits as apparitions, visions, or raising them bodily for the purpose of divination. Yes, it is. It is not necrophilia, which I accidentally typed in and it pulled that up and I'm like, what? No. Which is having (laughs) sex with dead bodies. Yeah, no, 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 no. It had this whole article about, oh, and there's homicidal necrophiliacs. I'm like, what is it talking about? Like, you're, okay, I'm going to make a joke, but like your FBI agent is like, really like, what the heck is up with this one? Okay. Like, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah, for real. This this, this girl's off the, off the chain, as yeah, one of my the, friends says. Off the chain. I think that's what she says. And she's very Southern. So she's like, you're, you're off the chain. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've met anybody recently that says that phrase. So yeah. Yeah. I think she's, I, she's pretty funny. <laughs> um, but I looked at Wikipedia. Because that's one of my favorite places to go for the witchy side of these definitions. Mm -hmm. And it said that necromancy is the practice of working with the dead. Witches who practice necromancy magic do a lot of ancestral and spirit work and use divination tools like the Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. And it's not considered black magic. Um, You know, they always, the connotation with necromancy is, oh, that's black magic. Yeah. it's it, just like any other magic. It's not the magic itself that's black. It's the user and how they use it that makes it either good or bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it it can be used to kill or inflict pain on living things. So, you know, depending on how that's used and why that's used, it, it could be considered black magic. Yeah. Yeah. And the word necromancy is adapted from the late Latin word necromantia yeah necromantia (laughs) yeah we we know my pronunciation problems (laughs) if you're new here i have pronunciation problems and um and it's also a combination of post-classical greek you know and Mm -hmm. so it's a a mashup of the words like dead body and divination like yeah it yeah it's actually literally i took like four years of latin so it's actually from the Greek necros, which means dead body, 
mm-hmm. and mantia, which means divination by means of. So literally divination by means of a dead body. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. um, to a necromancer, there's nothing necessarily of value inside of, oops, I just threw my pen across the room. <laughs> uh, um, there's nothing necessarily of value when creating magic um, inside of a live human. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only the body that matters. It's okay. like a resource. The body is the resource in doing the magic for a necromancer. Okay. And I, I kind of have a joke. Okay. So necromancers are just healers with bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. I guess, I guess. Uh, <laughs> title of this episode, Necromancy and River's Bad Jokes. <laughs> no, no one will listen to it if they know it's uh, going to have more of my bad jokes in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's get into the little bit of the history, which yeah, is there, what... There's so much history. Yeah, I really wanted to get into like a lot of the history, and I even broke it up in like chunks so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna start with the uh antiquity okay and antiquity is like an era so i i've studied this i've actually taken specific classes about antiquity and um the time periods of the um of of this era is about 3000 bc to approximately like the mid 400s of the early middle ages Okay. So it lasts a long time. There's multiple like eras within antiquity. It's just like a huge mashup span of time. Yeah. 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 So in this time, early necromancy was related to and most likely evolved from shamanism. Yes. Yeah. I read that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and shamanism, it, which calls upon spirits such as like ghosts of ancestors, mm-hmm. right? It, it definitely can be ancestor magic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then classical necromancers uh, address the dead in a mixture of high pitch squeaking and low droning. And um, it's comparable to the trance state muttering of the shamans, which I thought I, was very cool. I would like to hear a recording of that. It's I, like, I know. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like stop it really. yeah kind of <laughs> no but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's probably like around, how it was like yeah around how it would be yeah and then, uh necromancy was um also prevalent throughout antiquity with records of its practice in ancient egypt uh babylonia greece and rome and i feel like a lot of this stuff doesn't like a lot of the stuff we talk about the records aren't very clear, mm-hmm. but some of the stuff about necromancy is like more clear than some of the, like, you know what I mean? Like some of there the- is definitely a lot more information on necromancy than there is on some of the magics that we try yeah. to go and search for the history on. There's a lot. It, it dates back so yeah. far. Like I, it dates back even before like this era the in antiquity, I bet. It's mm-hmm. just like we don't have like the documentation of it, like how we did in antiquity when people like civilization started to be more advanced and keeping records, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And then the oldest literary account of necromancy is found in Homer's Odyssey. Yes. Which Again, I, I go read ahead. those. I read those and I don't remember. Oh, neat. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Hey, but specifics. did you read them in Latin like I did? No. Oh, you know I, I couldn't, I couldn't even read a sentence in Latin right now, but I did in college. We read the Iliad and we read Odyssey in Latin, mm-hmm. but so I do know a little bit about the Odyssey. Um, you know, it, it, like you said, it was probably necromancy was probably practiced long before Homer's time, mm-hmm. but this is the first written account that has been found on it. And in this poem, uh, um, Odysseus, the hero. Mm-hmm. He's sent to the underworld by a sorceress near, named Circe, and his goal is to use the spells that Circe gave him to raise the spirit of the dead prophet. Uh, I think it was Ty- Tiresias, mm-hmm. and to talk to him. So, in addition to spells, he had to go through all these necromantic rites to uh, 
to do this. And so they had to be performed at night around a fire pit. And he was required to pour out milk, honey, wine, and water to attract the dead. Mm -hmm. And then he has to prepare a drink from the blood of sacrificial animals. And he had to recite prayers. And the drink allows the dead to recognize and communicate with the living. So with help, he was able to communicate with um, Tiresias, or Tiresias um, and then with his mother. And then later he converses with a whole bunch of famous deceased writers and philosophers, which wasn't supposed to be what he was doing, but he used that opportunity to get that information. Mm-hmm. And then after the fall of Rome, necromancy was strictly forbidden by the church, which you've got a lot to go into on the church, but Mm -hmm. this of course didn't stop people from doing it. And actually many medieval necromancers were members of the clergy, which I I know you talk about Mm -hmm. um, who believed that they were invoking the help of God to conjure demons, angels, and spirits. That's just crazy to me. It is. It's like you said, I'll get a little bit more into Mm -hmm. it. Um, but the rituals that they did were quite elaborate. Um, it could involve magic circles, wands, talismans, and incantations. Mm-hmm. And the necromancer might, like, this is it, kind of creepy, uh, might also surround himself with morbid aspects of death, which would often include wearing the deceased's clothing. Yeah, that that's gross. Yeah. I mean, what I pictured when I first read this, I was like, you mean they put on their skin? And then I was like, no, that's not what that says. <laughs> <laughs> I see where your mind is taken. <laughs> I know. I'm like, they're wearing the dead people's skin. Ooh. <laughs> no, but also like consuming foods that like symbolize lifelessness and decay, such as like, like blackened bread and unfermented like grape juice. Like they would also do that, you see, know? That's so gross I too. don't think that wearing their skin was like far out there. Yeah, and because some um, necromancers even went as far as to take part in like mutilating, like and consuming the corpses. Like I've read so, that like, too. Yeah, so they would like, eat the dead bodies or yeah. parts of them. Yeah, so yeah. wearing the skin doesn't seem as bad as eating the, you know, like eating the dead body. Oh my god, that's it's, just yeah. I would rather wear a dead body than eat a dead than body. Eat it. Well, yeah. I mean, we eat dead animals all the time, but we don't think about it like that. You well, I, we cook them. I'm not so sure that they these were cook cooked. them or not. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The type of like a <laughs> necromancy and uh, <laughs> cannibalism or. <laughs> you could make uh, a necromancy cookbook. <laughs> oh, that would be so gross. <laughs> that would be so terrible. <laughs> Add a little soy sauce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Human sushi. Oh. <Ew. laughs> okay, okay, okay. But if anybody wants to take that idea, it's ours. <laughs> Y'all can't have it. <laughs> um, these ceremonies um, would also be carried on for hours, days, or even weeks leading up to the eventual summoning of the spirits. You know, and I wonder if all of this stuff that they did made them hallucinate seeing the spirits. I I don't know. But I read something similar on um, the occult-world.com blog, which is really wonderful. We'll post the uh, links that we used. Mm -hmm. But it said that necromancy rituals might have called for a performance at night in graveyards under a full moon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, days of preparation might precede the actual summoning, like you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, the necromancer would meditate on the dead who would be summoned. They um, would meditate on the deities of the underworld, which back in the time of the Romans and the Greeks, they had uh, Hades was one of them. I don't remember the name. It, the Greek and Romans had different names for the same God mm-hmm. um, and they would eat those foods associated with death. Like I read the flesh of dogs. They would (gasps) eat. No, I know. And the black bread and the unfermented grape juice, like you said. And then in the middle ages, it was believed that necromancers ate corpses and the corpses or pieces of the corpses and blood from a living or sacrificed animal would be used in the ritual. Oh, and then, uh, to protect themselves during all this death stuff that's going on, the necromancers would um, 
perform their rites within a magic circle, like you talked about, or mm-hmm. wear this amulet that was protection against the dead, I guess. Hmm. I know. It's it's so interesting. I've, I've it is fascinating. I really had a good time doing these these notes. <laughs> Me too. And I mean, as I was researching, I'm like, who who first thought of oh, let's eat a dead corpse and it's going to help me talk to the dead. I mean, yeah, I where mean, does that come from? It, it's not a logical jump to me anyway. Well, I feel like, well, okay, I'm going to be a little bit of a history buff, but mm-hmm. um, I feel like learning about religion, because I've taken a couple religion classes mm-hmm. and learning about specific religions, you know, you have in Christianity where you, eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ. Oh yeah. You become See, I'm not a Christian, so I no, don't know that kind of stuff. Yeah, but really. you 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 eat the bread which re- uh, uh represents the the flesh of Christ and you drink the juice You're that right. represents the blood because you want to become one with your your god or who you worship, right? So mm-hmm. you're becoming one with that person. So I feel like with necromancy and the idea of eating their flesh, you become one with that with that person or whoever you're trying to speak with I so guess that is logical or that's that's how I got it anyways but that's because I've taken all these classes where, all these religion courses yeah I, where I, I took a few in this. college but um I took mostly philosophy courses so mm-hmm. I didn't get into the religion per se mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, religion is fascinating to me I'm curious about how all these different religions have uh popped up independent of each other and how some religions sweep the entire world and some don't. I mean, it's just fascinating to yeah, me. Yeah. Another, it is another topic, another topic. Yes. Um, but let's move on to like the early and high middle age, like period. And um, this period is of European history that lasted around um, 1000 AD to um, 1000, like, 1250 like how would i say that AD. like 1250 AD. yeah 1250 okay. AD. so many medieval writers believe that um actual resurrection required the assistance of god um yes if i remember correctly in my history um this era was very in europe especially it was very like um like religion heavy Yes. So I could understand where they believe that you needed the assistance from the church or from God to be able to assist you in these types of practices. That's why the clergy actually practiced this. Yeah. Because they thought they were doing God's work. Yeah. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. They saw the practice of necromancy as conjuring demons who took the appearance of spirits. Mm -hmm. And um, the practice became known explicitly as malf. Malficium, or Malficium. Mal- Malficium. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Catholic Church condemned it, you know. Yeah, it has a Latin meaning too, the Malficium, mm-hmm. which uh, it's Malificium actually, but the um, in Latin, the C's are usually pronounced as the K sound, the mm-hmm. K sound. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, the meaning in Latin is that it's an, a- an act of witchcraft to perform with the intention of causing damage or injury. Um, and so it was thought that this was bad or evil mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, information gathering or yeah. divination. It was actually evil, they thought. Yeah, I have a lot of that in there, too. Yeah. Um, but uh, medieval necromancy is believed to be a, a, like like of astro- like astral magic type derived from Arabic influences and exorcism derived from Christian and Jewish teachings. Yeah, that's fascinating that it, it really does permeate different religions. Mm-hmm. All religions kind of have some kind of necromancy thoughts about them. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the origins of the medieval necromancy um, is still speculated because yeah, no one knows for yeah, sure. No one knows. And I feel like well, I could get on this whole other topic of like our history and stuff that we're being taught in like school is wrong, you know? Yeah. History is written by the victors. So yeah. who knows yeah. what the true, so, you know, that book 1984 by George Orwell. You haven't read, you haven't read that? Maybe, maybe I read it. Maybe I've read it. Oh Lord. It's uh you know, in that book, they actually changed history daily. But wow. anyway, 
Different, yeah. different topic. Anyways. Um, yes. Arabic influences are evident in rituals that involve like the moon phases, sun placement, day and time. And then you have the, if I, I think I'm going to say this right, fumigation. That's right. Yeah, fumigation. fumigation. And the act of burying it, burying images are also found in both astral magic and necromancy. That's interesting. You know, back to the Arabic influences with the moon and the sun, that's very witchy. Mm-hmm. That, you know, we, at least in my practice of witchcraft, I'm very reliant on the moon phases and the sun placement, the day and the time and all of that affects the power i think i think so um so that's interesting that that came from arabic um background yeah um and then you have the christian and jewish influences um appear as like symbols and in mm-hmm. in like formulas uh, in summoning rituals so it i i think all this stuff is just so cool because it, it really is i would have- love you know those books by dan brown the the lost symbol and um demons and angels i can't remember them all that reminds me of all of all of these symbols and things i feel like if you you know it's been lost a lot of these symbols and things have been lost but the christian and jewish influences do permeate magic i Mm -hmm. think Mm -hmm. i think so too like I mean, yeah, like, I mean, we're affected by it. (laughs) All of those things happened and you can't help, but even, even the pagan stuff that's still going on now, you know, Christianity tried to adopt a a Christian side of it. Um, it, It's just, it's all kind of intermeshed because of the way things changed in history. History is fascinating. History is fascinating. And again, history is might might not like what we know might not be the truth might, yeah it might not even be true you, you, so like that's what's i know it's oh, bad that i'm so interested in that like the fact that it's, it's not bad nothing, nothing of what we've learned like nothing could be real parts could be real all of it could be real or true you know or but, in the future they could look back on this and go boy those people believed in those silly myths you know i mean I how know. strange right i, I think about uh, I'm getting off topic, but I think about this a lot <laughs> because like, if you date back to like, like again with like the religion and like, it's like, Oh, Adam and Eve. And it's like, well, what was the well, time like, like, and how did the history, like if it worked down, like, like timeline wise, like down, how does all of this happen like how do how do we start there and in there and all the in-betweens we don't know we just know from stories being told and we all know the name like the game of telephone and how right. it all it's even in like a short circle of friends and then you're you know like it's well, that's so like cool. the bible that we read now is nothing it, this is like 16 translations if not more yeah a lot from of the original bible and yeah. words Words can be uh, translated a lot of ways, but, you know, I mean, looking at the Romans, we look back at them and go, oh, ha ha, they believed in Zeus and all of that. Well, who knows if years from now, people will look back at us and say, oh, they believed in one God. Oh, ha ha ha. Yeah. You know, it's all different. It's It's interesting to me. It is. It's very interesting. And I think about it a lot. (laughs) Yeah, me too. That's why we're friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You should, you know, y'all, when we get together, our husbands kind of wander off because we get into these conversations where we're like, what if this and what if that? And our husbands are like, oh God, you want another beer? Let's yeah. go out on the deck. Yeah, let's, let's leave. <laughs> let's go outside and get some fresh air. At least they're friends too. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get back into it a little mm-hmm. So um medieval practitioners believed that they could accomplish three things with necromancy um and these three three, blah, 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 blah. three things are will manipulation illusions and knowledge and okay with will manipulation um generally it's like what affects the mind and will of another person animal or spirit and demons are summoned to cause various like afflictions to one another such as like quote 
to drive them mad, to inflame them uh, to love or hatred, to gain their favor, or to constrain them to do or not to do some deed. In so quote. somehow they're using the dead to affect a living person yeah. to to make them do, do these things. Yeah. Will um, manipulation. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then the illusions involve reanimation of the dead or conjuring food, entertainment, or a like mode of transportation. So in my mind, I thought of, <laughs> I thought of a horse, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like like a horse in a carriage type with the. Tra- I, I like- thought of a little fairy, a little fairy boat. Oh, I, I don't know why. <laughs> well, um, okay, the river sticks, you know, goes to the land of the dead. So my brain was already on the, you know, we're yeah, talking about yeah, death and all that. Yeah. So. Um, and then in knowledge, knowledge is allegedly discovered when demons provide information about various things. This might involve identifying criminals, finding items, or revealing future events, which I thought was very interesting. Well, to me, what's interesting is that they think it's demons providing this information, whereas I would think that if you're bringing a dead person back, it would be that person that is giving you what they know. I could see that, but I could also see where they'd be like, okay, this is like, like, let's say it's a loved one that's dead and you're trying to mm-hmm. contact them and they're not acting normal. Obviously they're not going to act It's not normal. really them. Yeah. And so they try to yeah. like, maybe it's not them or if it is them, they don't want to see them like that. So they just like, oh, that's a demon. That's not, you know, mm-hmm. the person. Or it could be a demon. I mean, it could be a conduit for demons. I'm not yeah. sure what I think about Okay, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, but we're back. So (laughs) it was me. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So what I was going to say, and I know that you got cut off, but we can't remember what we were talking about. Something Um, about demons. Yeah. Um, But what I was going to say about the uh, the revealing of future events, I like the idea of there is no past, present or future because all of those are coexisting at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. so like everything that has happened will happen, you know, type thing. Um, so I like the idea of like the revealing of future events, because if you in my mind, if you are dead, then you are aware of like not your body, but like your soul existential, like other being that you like your energy is aware of everything. So it could reveal. Maybe. Now, I I was going to bring this up later, but I'll bring it up now. There's a series of books that I read. I love to read urban fantasy. And this series of books is called the Grave Witch series. It's by Kalea Price, I think. And her Grave Witch is a witch that is able to cross into the world of the dead to raise the shades of a living person. But all the shade knows is what they knew up to the point of their death. They don't have that Mm -hmm. existential knowledge like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, if it really is that person that's dead, does their knowledge end at the time that they died? I could see that. But what I feel, okay, this is my personal opinion. (laughs) So if you don't have it, I've no like hate on you and your views or whatever, right? Yeah, we're all loving here. Everybody's thoughts are okay. I feel like, like we take experiences and gain that. And so the life that you're living right now, you chose, like we had a choice to live in certain periods to gain these uh, lessons, let's say, like okay. lessons. So okay. it's not per se like the memories because the memories are with our bodies and our brain, right? Mm-hmm. But these lessons that we learn have a hard impact on like us, like not us, like not our physical being, but our spiritual like, being. Spiritual being, let's call it that. Um, and so it's not more specifically of like what we get but we know all, if that makes sense. Like we know everything that's going to happen, 
but we as beings, as like in our spiritual selves, we need to ascend somewhere higher. So we go through these like lives to well, gain the Yeah, I was going to say, you believe in reincarnation. I so. do. I do. But I don't believe in reincarnation linearly. Like, let's say there's a life like my life right now where mm-hmm. I thought I could learn a lesson or whatever lesson of hardships in this life. But I, I end this life and I go back and I'm like, oh, wait, I have a hardship that I could also learn back in Egyptian times. I'll go there next. You know, I don't think it's what if I don't, I don't want to learn any lessons because lessons hurt. I want to, I, mean, exactly. I want to be, you grow as a person when you learn these lessons. So, but what I'm saying is like, I don't think that our timeline is linear. I think that right. what happened has already happened and anything that's going to happen is already set. <laughs> and I know that there's a lot. Didn't of- we talk about the story of the egg? I, I feel like I posted that for our patrons. You maybe. did. You posted that. I think it's on that- a blog. Yeah. Y'all go and read that. Our patrons have access to that. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And it talks about exactly what Ren is talking about, the non-linear timeline, although it takes it a step further than what Ren is talking about, where we're all one person. One person is everybody. Just go read it. If Mm -hmm. if you will support us, please. Um, You will have (laughs) access to that, um, that story. It's called the egg. It's a fascinating story. Is it on we, our? We, is I it think on it's our on our Patreon? Patreon. I think so. Okay. Do you, do you, if it's not, I will post it. Okay. I'll post it there. Okay. Anyway, um, we've gotten way off topic. We have, we were but, supposed to move. But back we're to, on. We're on topic, but off topic. <laughs> so, necromancy history. We're still doing, yes. and we're now <laughs> moving into the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Yes, so, we are almost towards the end. Okay. Okay. So this period is in the uh, 14th and 15th century. So it's a lot shorter than the other um, time spans and eras that we've talked about. So this one has a lot less information, like documented information. Mm -hmm. Um, So necromancers and other practitioners of magic arts were able to utilize spells featuring holy names in this time and Mm -hmm. um, impunity. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, with impunity, yes. Yeah. And um, they use these as any biblical ref, like with biblical references and like such as like in rituals. Prayers. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, like prayers rather than spells, right? Yeah, which to me, I mean, I think I've said this before. I think a prayer is a spell. And I think it, I think it could be the same thing because you have, it's all about intent. Intent, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, a prayer is intent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so in the notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci, it is stated that, quote, all of human opinions that is to be um, reputed the most foolish deal, which with the beliefs in necromancy, the sister of alchemy, which gives birth to simple and natural things, end quote. (laughs) I don't even know what that means. I mean, I know that he worked with alchemy. Mm-hmm. He tried to change, you know, lead into gold or whatever it was. So does that mean that he thought necromancy was foolish or he thought it wasn't foolish? Because he compared it as a sister to alchemy, which mm-hmm. he did believe in. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's saying that it's like something that's natural hmm. as well as like with alchemy. It's the simple and natural things that go into Unless if I'm interpreting it wrong. I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, necromancy is something I have not really studied. It's a little bit scary to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it To me, in my mind, it's always been associated with voodoo or the dark arts, which not, not to say that all voodoo is dark arts, but I feel like necromancy has always, you know, we all have fear of the death. We all have fear of death. Nobody wants to die. Yeah. And so to embrace a practice that uses death is a little bit scary. I am. I. Yeah, I I could see that. But if I feel like if you're one to work and practice necromancy, then I feel like you would understand and what to sort of expect. Yeah. But how do you even start that? What do you how do you start saying, oh, I think I'll do necromancy now. 
Well, anyway, we can talk about that later. We yeah, got we'll off talk track a, again. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but the little information in this time period, um, there wasn't much. But what I found yeah. that popped up really prevalently was about a manual. A hmm. manual, like a physical manual, like book. Um, and it was brought up multiple times where necromancy appears in the um, mun. Chi, like, how do you, how would I even? Munich. Munich. That's Munich. Munich. Mm-hmm. Wow. Munchie. <laughs> Which, Munich is a German word. So that's interesting. Yeah. A Munich manual and is an evolution of these theor- like theoretical understandings. And it has been suggested that these authors of the manual, manual knowingly designed the book to be in discord with the. Uh, uh, ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical law yeah so they law. went intentionally against yeah. the church yeah and so that, i mean munich to me is interesting if, if it's truly german because there is a lot of magic associated with germany you know you always hear oh ireland is the magical world but germany and i am half german so to think about you know that's where the brothers Grimm came from they came from germany um, a lot of these ideas of magic came from Germany. And to know that this Munich manual might have had necroman- necromancy uh, information, that's very interesting to me. Mm-hmm. It yeah. Is. And, so, you know, I heard that at this time period that you're talking about, necromancers were kind of like monks. And okay, I'm about to be struck by lightning, but they, they lived these very austere lives. They ate only certain foods. They avoided even the sight of women, which means that they were all men. Mm -hmm. Um, They remained celibate, um, that kind of thing. And often it was a virginal boy or man that was called upon to complete a ceremony of communing with the dead. It had to be a virginal person Mm -hmm. that hadn't um, experienced the carnal to be able to connect with the dead, which I I don't, I don't quite understand that logic either. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. I also heard from that, like um, I saw your notes and I diverged a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, At least one form of the ritual required an assistant and um, like that was like the prediction. So the prediction was usually done with like mirrors and glass or liquids in a replace like receptacle. Yeah. A receptacle <laughs> is something that holds something. Yeah. Okay. My, okay. Um, it, <laughs> liquids. In we, a rec- we love yeah. Rin, everybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, liquids in a receptacle that formed a reflective surface. And um, the images that would form on the surface could only be seen by the young boy, like oh. the young virgin boy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'll wonder, put a- I, I wonder why. Well, first of all, this is very misogynistic because it is only men. Why, why, why is it only men? But, you know, you got to remember the time period we're talking about. But virginal also is very interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. We could, we could have a whole other discussion. On Another that. discussion. Okay. Let, let's, let's move on to, to the current time. The modern era. Woo. We modern era. <laughs> Yay, woo. We're finally here. So in the present day, necromancy is generally used as a term to describe manipulation of dead or the dead or the pretense thereof often facilit- uh, uh facilitated is right okay these drinks y'all i i can barely speak right now and we're only halfway through this yes this topic (laughs) um through the use of ritual magic or some other kind of occult ceremony okay um do you not have this note either? <laughs> what what was I supposed to have put in I, there? I think it can also include using death as an energy source, like a bo- like a bone wand. Wow, that was a really good point. Why didn't I? Why didn't it show up on my notes? Because to me, I really do feel like a bone wand would be the coolest thing. Okay, I'm really feeling this drink now, uh-huh. and. Since we're on Zoom and we can see each other, are my, is my face not like purple? 
It's red. Yeah. It is very <laughs> red. I can feel these drinks that we've been drinking. Yeah. Okay. Y'all, I, I wish that we were together because we have a bunch of fun doing this, but we're apart right now. So it kind of makes it difficult. Yeah. Um, we also have the contemporary seances uh, where they channel like with channeling and spiritualism verge on necromancy when supposedly invo- like invoking the spirits um, to ask them of like future events or secret information. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the processes of reaching the dead have changed dramatically. I'm so sorry. I can tell that I'm getting, I'm getting wasted y'all. They have changed dramatically from the past to what they are now. And, you know, in some cases it's a very simple process, like, you know, mediums Mm -hmm. who, you know, you, you mediums will call on the dead and, uh, or their spirit guides to help them get into a trance without all this complex stuff that they, you know, eating the flesh of the dead and all that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't anymore. Yeah. Thank, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, where was I? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry. You're going to no, have to edit this it's really okay. bad. Um, so now that we know the history, uh, that was a long history mm-hmm. learning session. Mm-hmm. Um, what does that mean for us? Okay. <laughs> so I don't really quite get into the witchcraft yet because I, what, what I do you thought, mean? I thought this was very cool. It's scientific. <laughs> She, she is a very science person, y'all, and she does approach her witchcraft scientifically, which I actually think is a very cool thing. I really, I love Ren. She is, she makes me look at things in a different way than I am used to. I'm all about the, oh yeah, I believe in that. And I'm like, oh yeah, let's jump into it. She's like, but you know, that's not really how it works scientifically this. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, love her science. So, so get into the science, my dear. Yes. So, and I'll explain at the end as to why this is important. Mm-hmm. So scientifically, uh, necromancy is the magical art of communicating with the dead. We know that. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So in a science article that I found over the past 35 years, modern science has developed its own form of necromancy. Okay. Okay. Stay, stay with me. Okay. Science has used modern day DNA and ancient DNA, so the dead, to compare and understand evolution and the origins of humans. So one- So there's like DNA from like old? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, like DNA is in everything that we are. So like, let's say anything of like, like any human remains that we find like old, even, like even if our, it's like-, like through, prehistoric yeah, yeah. stuff yeah there's, okay. there's dna everywhere oh. and so one fascinating discovery is that the current day people have up to it said it said around two to five percent of neanderthal dna hiding in our genomes so as a result of those results of an ancient crossbreeding between an ancestor and a neanderthal and okay. i i have okay i have gone deep into the understanding of evolution and i took like several classes on this learning about evolution and learning about all of the um types of like i can't uh sapiens you know like homo sapiens we're homo sapiens but i learned more about there were yes i i took anthropology in college so Mm -hmm, yes mm -hmm. and i have taken at least seven (laughs) of those classes and um so this is kind of like a crossbreeding between an ancestor and a, another species. Cause like, like, you know, they're two. That's different. really. It is disturbing so cool. to cool. think about. That means it's like, it's like two different species actually made it and were able to have children. Mm-hmm. It's cool. It's cool. So in short, how do we find out if we, I want to do a DNA test to see if I have Neanderthal DNA. I don't know. I, this is was, it that it, one, two, three, yeah, and me or it, whatever? No, it was just like, it was 
done scientifically. Like there's like an actual scientific study. So I don't know how well like out there it is right now. Interesting. And like the process that they did. So in short, there is magic everywhere. Um, It just depends on how you use it. I know that this isn't communicating with the dead directly, but it is using the dead to communicate historical knowledge to help us advance our understandings today. Yeah, because it's like within our own genes, right? Yeah, it's in our genes. And so now I'm done nerding. I'm not, I'm done (laughs) nerding out. So let's get back to it. Our our very favorite science nerd. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So y'all, so she's nerdy and I'm going to nerd a little bit. So think about the movie Jurassic Park. I feel like that could be necromancy because they took the DNA from these past dinosaurs that have all been extinct and put them into living was it frogs or whatever and create dinosaur that's that's necromancy don't you think i feel like yeah because like i I don't know like that's scientific necromancy. it is that i've created a new term scientific necromancy (laughs) i like your definitions like like your scientific necromancy because i wouldn't say that it's fully necromancy because you can't you're not actually talking to the dead as mm-hmm. if like you would in like a ritual practice and right. stuff like that. Um, but I do like that it is still kind of the same because we like scientifically like in that DNA, we're talking to that DNA. Like we are using right. DNA to figure out stuff for today. So scientific yeah, I, necromancy. <laughs> I really feel like Jurassic Park isn't that far out of our wheelhouse. I really feel like we're yeah, but we don't to need to do to. that. I agree. That is that is an entirely different because discussion. Let's get into another discussion. Like a um, necro- ne- necro- Necromancy is most commonly associated with witches and witchcraft. Okay. And since, since ancient days, tales of witches using necromancy for power and insight have appeared in legends and lore across yeah. many cultures. Like we've kind of just talked about. But it goes right. way beyond and flourishes out from just the small area that I just talked about, like antiquity. I think I mostly stuck with Europe with my history, but there is more history throughout the whole world. Like there really is. And I think that's important. Like uh, to me, the voodoo and hoodoo Mm -hmm. is an entirely, it's not the European um, history. It is an entirely different history. And I I feel like that's worth exploring. Yeah. 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 Okay. Necromantic rituals could be both mundane and grotesque depending on their purpose. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, they were also elaborate, you know, like they often involve talismans, incantations, magic circles, candles, symbols, and wands. Yeah, sigils. That, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the necromancer might wear the clothes of the deceased, like we said. Um, That's s- yeah, sit for days without moving or even mutilate and eat the corpses, like we just said. That's gross. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a way to call out to the other side, kind of like how we talked about with like, being one with, um, you know, like in the Christianity, like one with your deity or who you worship when you eat the, eat the flesh, you know? Um, well, and a lot of Chris, I mean, a lot of, um, uh, Wiccans and witches are all about nature. Mm-hmm. So being one so, with nature, yeah, I could see that where like, mm-hmm. if you're doing a practice and it involves like strawberries or berries or some sort of edible product, mm-hmm. you can eat it. But I mean, I guess you could say that corpses are edible, but well, I don't want to oh, go there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> that's gross. They're, no. And okay. it is, yeah, it is also said that necromancy is like dark magic or black magic, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I again, I think it's more. I, who I think is it's doing yeah, it. how it's used, not like it, the ma- like it itself. Because necromancy, the word, isn't anything until you apply something to it. I agree. And so I feel like it's how you apply it and what you apply to it is what makes it good or bad. Yeah, there there are a lot of ceremonies out there that you can do to do necromancy. And I found some and I was going to I was going to actually say, oh, this is a spell to do this. And mm, I'll let you all look at it and you decide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but some of the following elements are common in a lot of the different 
spells and rituals that you do. Mm -hmm. They usually begin with the necromancer drawing some kind of signs or sigils or inscriptions on the group that's doing this with a knife or sword. I mean, Mm -hmm. we don't use swords much nowadays, so I would say it would probably be your athame. Um, Do it on a cloth with ink or blood. I mean, you could just draw blood on everybody and and use the the tip of the athame to to do the sigils on Mm -hmm. the cloth um the circle is not only a symbol of power but also a means of containing it's a safety thing it protects us as well as containing the spirit of the dead that we're bringing back Mm -hmm. you want to have a circle to uh protect not only you but to keep that spirit from getting free if you do conjure a spirit Mm -hmm. Words are added to the circle, including inscriptions pointing to the north, south, east, and west, the names of the necromancer, the medium, the spirits being called. Mm -hmm. Um, Signs usually indicate ancient figures such as the pentagram. You can do astrological symbols. I I feel like this is the personal part of it. It's whatever, you know, you feel for the practice of your magic that is important. And then objects such as jugs, swords, candles placed in specific, you know, again, that is more a you thing. You've got to figure out what is important to you because what's important to me and what I want to use in my ceremony is not going to be the same thing Mm -hmm. as what you use in your ceremony. Mm -hmm. So once you set this scene, once you get through all of that, um, you go through a ritual, a a ritual, a yes. ritual, <laughs> a ritual, uh, which varies uh, depending on everybody. Depending on, uh, wow, this is a really good drink, you all. I, I'm afraid to let them go try it because I am like <laughs> the Walking Dead right now. Yeah, but some elements of your spell might include a prayer or a plea to the spirits. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you're, everybody's different, so it could be that you're pleading to the spirits, the angels, demons, whatever it is that you want to invoke, instructions for how the dead should appear and what they should do, spells, uh, you know, sometimes those are based on, there are biblical stuff like we talked about before, you know, Mm -hmm. or you can make your own. I'm a big fan of making your own. Sacrifices. Now, we could do a whole episode on what sacrifice means. And we might, we might do a Patreon episode for on sacrifices, but it could be animal blood. It could be milk. It could be honey. It could be ashes, flour, salt, um, something that is given up by you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can sprinkle these things around Um, rituals ranging from knocking two stones together, as simple as that to burning candles, whatever ritual means something to you, um, you know, and I, this is where I was going to tell you about the book that I've read, the series of books, the Kalea Price books, the mm-hmm. Grave Witch, mm-hmm. fantastic books as far as necromancy goes. If you are truly interested in necromancy, I highly recommend these books. She is an incredible writer. There is a lot of thought that goes into not just the witchcraft. I mean, and there are all kinds of witches in her books. Um, excellent series. I, I really, really, really think you all ought to read it, but it does touch on the necromancy of it. I mean, she is absolutely 100% a necromancer and the main character. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all that I have for necromancy. We're definitely going to have to do another episode because one, we kind of derailed a lot in this one because we did these discussions are important when talking about necromancy Mm -hmm. but um that's all that i have i mean we're like this when we get together (laughs) y'all yeah yeah Um, we go off on these that's when our husbands are like you want to go play pool yeah (laughs) let's let's leave but um oh yeah and i also wanted to give a shout out to our new patron we have a new patron yay and let me make sure that I'm going to pronounce their name correctly. And let's see. So their name is Christy. Thank Yay. you. Christy. Yes. Thank you, Christy, for 
coming along on our uh, uh I one of y'all said virtual coven and I'm sticking with it because that's I love that. what it is. I mm-hmm. think um it's that sums us up on Patreon Patreon Patreon, you know, I always mess that up. Um perfectly because we are a virtual coven and we are kind of like a support system for everybody in there and vice versa. So thank I, you. I have to say I love the interaction with our little coven, our virtual coven. Nika is she talks to us all the time. Mm-hmm. And we love to hear I, from y'all. <laughs> yeah, it, it's awesome. And mm-hmm. we do try to do specific things for our actual patrons. You know, what are you interested in? And so Nika has been very uh, communicative with us and we've tried to do some things for her. So, mm-hmm. and yeah. also when you join, you get a complimentary welcome um, tote bag. Tote bag, yes. Yes. So, you know, you get that regardless. And then there's all these other things that you get just for supporting us, which mm-hmm. please, please come support us. Mm-hmm. So do the outro Ren. Okay. Um, you can find us on all social medias at C3 witchy podcast. That's a uh, TikTok, which we've been doing a lot better on TikTok. I've posted a couple. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with TikTok right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, TikTok, Instagram. We've been working on Instagram. Couple stories. Got a new theme going. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitter and Facebook. And then mm-hmm. you can also check us out at our website, which is www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you can find the link to our Patreon, as well as our episodes, our merch, our blog, our newsletter that came out roughly it it comes out around the first of each month yeah we we try around the first of each Mm -hmm. month i really like this one this month and um i also want to give a shout out to is it our next episode that we are recording yule we are gonna do a yule one is it really already that yeah i think oh my lord episode for um not Obviously, this comes out on a Friday. Um, So for next Friday, we are doing our whole episode on Yule. And I'm really excited. So (laughs) excited. Mm Yeah. There's Um, a a lot about Yule I'm excited to talk about. (laughs) We just posted on our Patreon for our patrons a sun candle ritual Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. that might be fun for you to do with your family. It's great for kids. It's kid-friendly. Um, you know, try to help to bring your children into the craft as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just posted that. And I mean, there's there's a lot to be offered for our patrons. We do really appreciate you guys so, so much. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we will be back. <laughs> we'll be back.